Remember in the summer of 2021, we, the community, were buying GPUs much more often. In some cases, we were hunting for the NVIDIA 3000 cards. But to the greater extent, we were buying pretty much anything we could find that was able to mine Ethereum. Now the merge is behind us, and many of us are reworking our operations and evaluating our strategies. In today's video, I want to discuss the 1660 Super, a card that I now have a love-hate relationship with. Is this card still viable in 2022? I want to review a few projects and how well the card performs. Is there a place for the 1660 Super? I'll start by sharing my experience in a little more detail. When I was getting my small farm up and running, I had invested in a number of Polaris cards off of the used market. While they were able to yield a respectable amount of Ethereum at the time, I quickly learned that they were not efficient and were going to create a density problem. In search of another option, I became aware of the 1660 Super GPU with its record for efficiency, producing nearly the same amount of yield as the Polaris cards, but at much less power. I promptly shifted gears, selling the Polaris cards, and started hunting for the 1660 Super. In due process, I accumulated a number of these cards. Now, in the fall of 2022, I find myself questioning what I want to do with them. Let's review some projects. First, we'll start with Kapow. Since there's several projects on the algorithm, such as Ravencoin and Neaxa. Unfortunately, the nearly three-year-old card does not have much to brag about, delivering nearly 13.1 mega hashes at 105 watts, delivering efficiency of 12.47%. Now I'm going to pause and share the efficiency of the rig, which is 9%. Often, efficiency is discussed at the individual GPU level. There's a place for that conversation, but in this bear market, it's time to evolve the conversation and look at the macro level of performance. Back to the topic at hand. With the 1660 Super, Kapow just does not perform well. Let's move on to Caspa. Once the card is mining, we can see a performance of approximately 242 mega hashes. This allows for an efficiency of 376%. Now we're looking at an entirely different scenario. Is CASPA a project for the 1660 Supers? When comparing power draw, absolutely. On the subject of power, it's a variable that Kapow is going to have to address. We know that projects can change their algorithms, and politicians love to bitch about the power draw within our industry. So the more efficient the algorithm, the better. Let's move over to Flux. Until very recently, Flux on the 1660 Super was kind of a mute topic. Thanks to updates to LOL Miner and Mini Z, we now get approximately 24 solutions at 79 watts, delivering an efficiency of 30.5%, which, in all fairness, is okay, and I know that it can be better than this, but not on this particular GPU. As I dropped the power limit, the card quickly fell below 20 solutions. In general, one can expect efficiency to be much closer to 40%. Is this card a good fit for Flux? Unfortunately, it delivers a much lower hash rate than we see in the 2000 and 3000 series of cards, but it is still an option. Lastly, let's quickly look at Ergo. Here we see that this 1660 Super is delivering 58.57 mega hashes at 76 watts for an efficiency of 77.1%. Ergo is another good example of an algorithm that requires less power. Wait a minute though. ETHHash lives on within Ethereum Classic and a few other projects. True. Simply, 
the card can be clocked to take less than 80 watts and deliver approximately 30 mega hashes. Unfortunately, current difficulty has daily yields at a very low number, but to ETC's credit, it is pretty simple to exchange the fiat. Speaking of difficulty, it has come into the picture as we have watched the redistribution of hash power post-merge. And this variable alone can influence our decisions on what projects we support. At the moment, there's no clear answer. Which directs us back to the question, where is the 16 Super best suited? I'll share my thoughts, but first I'll state that there's no one right answer. If you have a card and there's a project that you believe in, then that's the best reason to direct your card to it. If you're running your farm as a business, the question is more complex. We all have different means in how we might operate, but one variable that we all have in common is density, the number of cards that we are physically able to run within our location. A lot of variables such as available power, the cost of that power, come to, into question. Then there's the issue of space, heat, and perhaps the most important variable, how much tolerance the good wife has. If one is content with the size of their operation, then card efficiency answers our question. In my opinion, based on current yields, Flux and Caspa provide viable options. One could choose to shut down their 1660s and wait for the better tomorrow. This is a rational decision, but one I don't like. If one is not mining, one is not a miner. During this bear market, is it time to exchange the 1660 Super? Sell it and recoup some amount of money and put it towards a 2060 Super, or perhaps a 3070. I personally am leaning towards this strategy, and it's not something that has to be done immediately, but an objective to have completed by the end of next year. Perhaps what's most frustrating regarding the 1660 Super, and TI for that matter, is that once you have made a decision, a number of outside variables can change the dynamics of the industry that we are all in. And before we know it, we're stuck asking the question again. I'll wrap up by asking you, what are you doing with your 1660 Super? Make sure to share your thoughts in the comments below. Also, take an opportunity to hit the like button. It's always appreciated. New subscribers are always welcome especially as we get closer to that 1,000 subscriber mark. And hey, Bailey just reminded me to watch out for all the coins in the backyard, which is a good advice for all of us. Be mindful of your uptime, and thanks for watching.